Hi guys, it's Matt. Hey, how's everyone doing? I hope everyone's doing fabulous. I'm back with another video. However, today I'm not going to be doing a review or a roundup. Instead, it's going to be a, a kind of compilation of footage that I recorded at the launch event of the Adidas 4D Forward, uh, which took place in Portland, Oregon, where I've been uh, for a couple of days uh, this week. Hence why I didn't have any videos up for, you know, for a few days or for like, I think a, a week at this point. Uh, I was at the launch event of this, of this wonderful shoe. Uh, and I get to see a lot of things that other people are not, you know, you, you can't see yourself. I was let into areas where, where the shoe was designed, like such as the uh, Innovation Lab at the Adidas headquarters. Uh, it was such an awesome experience. I get to talk to a lot of people, a lot of interesting people who were involved with the creation of the shoe, including uh, scientists from MIT, uh, professors from MIT, sorry, uh, researchers from the uh, Calgary University in uh, Canada, and a lot of other people from inside and outside Adidas. And I recorded a lot of footage and I thought I'm gonna use it as a, a bit of like a, a B-roll footage for, for my upcoming review of the shoes. However, the, the, the stuff that I, I get to hear was so interesting. Uh, I thought you guys might wanna have a, like an insider look of how it feels and what went into creating these shoes. So without further ado, please enjoy the footage. Uh, I would like to put it out there that some of the footage that I recorded was in a very noisy environment. So do apologize for some of the sound quality uh, of, the, of, the, of the recordings, but uh, I did my best Best to isolate the the you know the person who was talking as much as I could. Uh, anyway, please enjoy the video, and I'll speak to you soon, guys. Cheers. One of the big things that we focus on in our organization is innovation. Innovation is really important. It's one of the things that Adidasla, at the very beginning, was one of his mantras. Now, for us, innovation is important now in 2022. And it's great that you're all here today, and we wanted to bring you here specifically because this is the birth where you are now. This space here is the birth of 4D actual place where 4D was created. I'm really excited to have the team here. My team is um, with Keith today and then we have our partners from Carbon from the University of Calgary and we have Peko from the MIT which is really exciting. We've been working with Adidas for maybe five or six years now. Um, we, our um, contribution is really early on in the design process so we are really looking at developing models for just foundational biomechanical models to understand what is the natural way that the body moves and how can you model the interface between the body and the environment and that interface is basically the shoe. What you really want in that, at least what I want in the shoe design, <laughs> is something that is in harmony with the athlete. Something where the shoe is not trying to force you to do something unnatural but it's something that is going to kind of enhance the natural biomechanics of the athlete. Um, and it turns out that's a really complicated mm. question, right? Because everybody runs a little bit differently. So how do I how do I design a shoe that works for me or for you? One of the things we realized early on is that um, uh, the ideal situation, so whenever you're running, you come down and you hit the ground, right? And in some way, you're, you, you, with your shoe, you're kind of loading up a spring, right? Mm. So you're compressing something. And ideally, you would like then your shoe even though I, I loaded it this way, I would like it to push me this way, hmm. right? And so the, the, the mechanical design question then says, okay, I've given you a pile of sticks. Here are my sticks that you can assemble into a lattice. You have no motor, you have no engine, you have no battery, you have no computer. It has to be a purely mechanical process. How do you design a mechanism such that out of this pile of sticks, such that when I push this way, it goes that way? Hmm. And it's not obvious how you do it. And I think, and that was, that bow tie lattice was the design that the Adidas engineers came up with, and it's it's brilliant. We're really early on in this design process. I think the, you know, the, that carbon printer has just opened up a whole realm of possibilities that we didn't have before, right? I mean, because you can imagine, you can move every one of these struts, right? There's a thousand struts in here, right? Which means that e even though he's, they said, you know, they looked at five million designs. That's just the tip of the iceberg, right? I mean, you can you, your imagination's the limit of what you can do here. And for example, right now, it's mostly bow ties all across. And you might imagine, oh, you know what? I want a bow tie on the front, 
but not so much in the back, right? Because if I if I land over here, I kind of want the forward motion over here. And so you can imagine designing things where the lattice changed as you moved along the shoe. There's a whole sort of space of lattices you could make. And over here, there's some lattices that are designed to, to give you the forward motion. Over here, there are lattices that are designed to return energy. Maybe somewhere in the middle, there's a magic lattice that gives you both forward motion and returns energy, right? At some point, we're going to find that. <laughs> this is an enormous space to explore and that we're going to be seeing more and more of those kinds of um, uh, like multi-purpose lattices that achieve more and more of the properties that runners want in the shoes. I'm from Carbon. I lead the materials development team. Um, and Carbon is a 3D printing company located in Silicon Valley. Most people, when they think about 3D printing, they think about little toys or things that they, they can print and put on their desk. And nothing wrong with that. It's very fun. But we saw a much bigger opportunity for this technology. One of the things is that it's impossible to create these types of lattice structures using a molding technology. It has to be done using additive manufacturing. We call this digital light synthesis, and at the highest level, we basically take advantage of an interplay between light and oxygen. But it allows us to print 10 to 100 times faster than um, uh, other additive technologies. That's depending on a range of geometries and what technology you're comparing against. Who better to bring in the future of running than our special guest who's going to be bringing in this shoe today. <laughs> Forty forward is a is a, a name that speaks to the mechanism of the midsole, which is forward motion. And so, this is a 3D printed midsole that um, is the is an entirely novel way of, of creating cushioning and a cushioning system. So we're actually taking uh, vertical forces that happen during running and converting them into forward motion. That concept started as an idea in this lab right here next to us um, from, a, from the athlete science team who asked the question around, you know, what, how could we create forward motion in a midsole and what would it do? And so the very first uh, prototypes were actually made just by going down to the, the creation lab downstairs and cutting foam midsoles and, and, and just creating forward motion uh, in a very crude way with a foam midsole. Now those are, those are really um, basic midsoles that just get us close to answering the question of, you know, could we do this? Is this even feasible? And then I think when we brought in 3D printing and the powers of 3D printing and, and structures that we can create, we started to make something that was entirely new and that the industry had never seen before. The key difference is that we completely updated the upper. And we've received a lot of feedback from runners, customers and athletes that the Fall Winter 21 model was great to wear, but it was not as supportive the longer you ran. So how could we improve that? We would bring in more uh, different materials. Um, so we have an engineered mesh on the bottom of the upper and we have a prime knit plus on the top because it's a really nice sock-like fit. Another impor important point is the 3D heel counter that we've implemented. We didn't have that on the previous version, um, but we've implemented that to really get a supportive fit. We have just some design elements updated. The eye stay, how we call it. Um, we don't have the lace loops anymore, but in, um, added some lace loops up here so that you can really tie the shoe nicely. And then when we look into the outsole, um, we've added a new design um, and also Continental. Um, so we really have key Adidas technologies 
um, on 40 forward. So we have different pillars targeting different benefits. RD0, ultra boost is heavily going against energy return. So 4D is focused on forward motion. I think when we speak to the lattice itself, the bow tie lattice that we refer to, you know, this is the result of, uh, of a long period of development and down selection and, and performance um, tests that, that get us to what we feel is a very optimized lattice for forward motion, but there's always room for improvement. So in this case, when we're trying to create forward motion, forward motion is related to height of midsole. So the taller a midsole, um, the more forward motion you can create. But you know, there's also the taller that you make the midsole, there's more material involved and this can um, make a heavier midsole basically. So finding, finding the, the right balance between height and weight and forward motion is key. So, so basically what you see here is the result of many trials in all directions and settling on a height that we think is, is um, significant for uh, creating a forward motion with scale. The next question that Adidas has asked me about, which I'm really excited about, is sustainability. Mm. And they've asked a really important question, which is not, um, not, not just how can we make our product more sustainable, it's what can we do to drive the entire industry to become more sustainable, right? Like, is there an innovation we could do at Adidas that will make it so that everybody else has to adopt that in order to be competitive? Right? So we're now doing sort of the bigger market analysis where we look at both um, uh, Adidas competitors, consumers, government regulators, the whole ecosystem to understand what are the knobs you can turn um, that would uh, that will drive the entire industry to be more more sustainable. And you know, some of the knobs you could turn would be um, we could develop new processes to make it cheaper to do a sustainable material. We could uh, one could the government regulators could tax carbon, right? You could um, imagine uh, um, people would be consumers would be willing to pay more for a sustainable product, right? Those are all different knobs you could turn. And the question is, where in that big space do you want to be such that the entire industry drives to a more sustainable product. It's quite an optical. It's, it's great. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. <laughs>